Hi, it's Jeff. And Denise from MouseSteps.com. And this is episode number 145. 145. Of Mouse Steps Weekly. Sponsored by Theme Park Connection in Orlando, Florida. Your best place for all your collectible needs. Mother's Day, Father's Day, all sorts of things coming up. Everything is coming up right now. That's for sure. The store is located between Walt Disney World and the airport. Very easy to get to. Also, Pixie Vacations, our official travel agency. And this is a great time to think about the Epcot Food and Wine Festival, which is just months away way at this point right and also um, they've been giving us bags to give away which is awesome and uh, we just want to say congratulations to Michelle McQuig uh, she won the bag and then we also had the postcards from last week right uh, and that is attraction faction and what is the address to get a hold of us for the prize oh Denise at mousesteps.com very good and we have another contest this week why don't you tell us what that one is well again it's the same bag although it won't probably be this bag they have different bags um, but with they'll put the name on on and the Mickey and just let us know who is your favorite Marvel superhero and then we will uh, take the name uh, next week. That's right. We'll be talking about Marvel coming up and there's plenty to choose from in the Marvel universe, that's for sure. And just let us know on Facebook, like us on Facebook and just let us uh, let us know who, who that is. Also, Maple Leaf Tickets, our official ticket agency, the best deals on tickets in town. Check them out. We're going to start off this week's show at Disney's Hollywood Studios. We went in there on the 26th anniversary. And the uh, studios looked very different and I love this view, although it only lasted one day. I know. We are very fortunate uh, to see this view because already the very next day, May 2nd, they put up the stage that I am sure will be up for Star Wars weekends and Frozen Summer Fun and all that stuff. So it will be a while before we see this area without a stage again. That's right. And you can see some new palm trees there. There's also other plants that, for some reason, were laying on the ground, but were eventually planted. Correct. Right? I mean, they're, they were still getting this area set up. This was just only the first day, and it was kind of blocked off anyway. But I think overall, it's going to look great. I think it'll be wonderful to have the unsullied view down Hollywood Boulevard. With a stage. Well, I, you know, the, the <laughs> stage is temporary, and it will go away. And who knows? Maybe they'll have a, a smaller area where they can do things like they used to back in the early 90s. They used to actually park floats for the parades there. There was a parade called the Dinosaurs. I think it was the Dinosaurs Live Parade. I don't even parade. remember that. And they would park the uh, little uh, floats and they would do a, a dancing thing. It was sort of like a stop entertainment type of parade. So who knows, maybe it gives them a chance to do that kind of thing in the future. And you have your sort of like a... Uh, a hub. A hub, yes. It was, it was like a hub. That would make a fine place for a statue, wouldn't it? Walt and Mickey? No. <laughs> no, that's been done before. Something different. A bumpet. Muppets. Kermit. They, they have that already. Kermit and Bob Iger. I would say Roger Rabbit and Michael Eisner because they, they actually opened the park. So that would be my choice. We're well, being silly, but I think yes. that would be kind of cool. Well, there's so much room here. You know, Walt always talked about how much room Walt Disney World has. So there's so much room The blessing there for, of size. Yes, right there. And so you, you can have, have much, them all. Yes, much size. <laughs> Darth Vader. <No. laughs> but uh, nope, it looks wonderful. I'm so glad we got to see it. Uh, one day only, limited time magic. But uh, It still looks fine, even with the stage. I mean, there's no hat in the way, so you, at least you can still see the, the theater. So we also decided we we're going to uh, walk around the park on the anniversary, see if there's anything else going on. Uh, big advertisements for Tomorrowland there. I know. We saw the, the preview. Jury is still out for me. I'm not sure on that one yet. This is where they're going to put the third track for Toy Story Midway Mania. Right. That'll be very, uh, very much needed because that's always so busy. You know, this soundstage goes way back. I remember in the early 90s, I saw a revival of Let's Make a Deal hosted by Monty Hall himself, which I know makes us, ages us. You remember Monty Hall. Yes. Let's so. Make a Deal is still on. I know. I Joe Carey, I believe. Is it? I thought it was Wayne Brady. Oh, they, it, it, I'm thinking <laughs> of uh, The Price is Right. That's oh, a, right. You're correct. Because everything is in revival, I think, now. And this theater here, the Premier Theater, uh, we hear is going away. They're going to be building a new theater, that type of uh, air-conditioned indoor theater. It's going to be right over there. This is an area that has had temporary type uh, of attractions. They had ESPN The Weekend back there. I believe uh, Darth Small was back there a few times so it would be a nice place for a air conditioned nice theater to replace the premiere theater if that truly does go away like we've heard i miss espn the weekend that was even though i care almost not about sports at all <laughs> i always thought it was a fun event yeah it was we always had a good time so i i understand i miss that too and it won't be long before we see the 
other Carthay Circle I know. at uh, Disney California Adventure. I can't wait. It makes me hungry just to see this <laughs> building now. <laughs> it makes me very hungry also. Uh, another thing we did this past week is we checked out the new superhero headquarters at Downtown Disney, soon to be Disney Springs. And it isn't called Marvel, although it has the shield, the shield logo up there. Uh, it is all Mar- Marvel yeah, stuff. There's no there's no a- <laughs> there's no DC characters to be found. And there's no Star Wars Marvel, superheroes. <laughs> it is certainly a Marvel store, and it's an awesome store. All I could say is, and we're, we're going to get into it, we're going to show you around a little bit, but when I was growing up, when I was 10, I would have loved this. I love it now, but I would have just been crazy about it when I was 10. And it was packed, and there, were, there was just uh, lots of buying going on in there. I wouldn't have been into it when I was 10 because I liked Wonder Woman, and I don't see Wonder Woman here. Well, right. <laughs> and especially if she's invisible, you yes. don't see her. But no, there's no DC, as we mentioned earlier. Again, I think it's great. Highly themed. You can spend a long time looking at all the details, although they have some of the displays very high in the air. So especially for kids, it'd be very hard to see, like no. the Spider-Man and, and the Hulk and things like that. Especially for adults with eye, you know, short, like I'm uh, getting, I'm short and my vision isn't what it once was. So to actually <laughs> read things in the air is not so easy for me. But overall, it is a very small store. So I hope they will expand this into something, you know, like, a superstore is, uh, even though I, it's not really for me, it is very busy. Well, we, we should also say this was a Saturday morning opening day. Well, the first Saturday of the new Avengers Age of Ultron movie. So it was packed. There were people in costume there, uh, adults and kids in costume. So you had more people than usual that would have been in the store this day. Well, it was it was still fairly early. Like the, the West Side would have just opened and that's what this looks like, you know? So right. <laughs> it, it really, you don't have to have a lot of guests in here for it to feel busy. It's going to do very well, but I hope they expand it. This is a former soccer store. Anybody looking for soccer merchandise, and I actually had somebody ask me about it, there's like a truck parked yes. down by uh, Cirque du Soleil. So if you're looking for cir- soccer merchandise, they have a small amount there right now. There's no soccer to be found in this Marvel store. Oh, I, I shouldn't say Marvel. Superhero store. Super, well, you can say Marvel. I mean, it is a Marvel store, but obviously contractually, they probably cannot use the word Marvel outside. There's some really nice merchandise, though. I mean, the Spider-Man display. I like that they have individual displays for each of the main superheroes they have a thor area captain america uh, it's just uh, it, they did a great job with this i th- no, i think so too i think uh again you know it took you a long time to get the video and also f- to get photos because um it really is again a, a very intimate uh size store but uh, but there, it's really chock full of a lot of stuff. A lot of the shield logos everywhere too. This reminds me of when we saw Marvel Universe Live. I've never seen kids so excited, so happy to be somewhere. And you should have seen the little kids. I know you. It got too crowded for you, and you were outside. There were kids that were like, "Thank you for taking me here. Thank you." Like like we've seen uh, one child who got so excited at Radiator Springs in California and was like. I am so excited. Thank you so much for bringing me here, this little That's kid. That's exactly it. I saw something very similar. So it was. Uh, it made me very happy just to watch the kids enjoying it so much, and adults too. And we'll see the movie tomorrow. I know. I can't wait. We will dine in. Di- dine in theaters, the only way to go for a long movie like yeah, this. Yeah, it, much more comfortable. Oh, our favorite part, the Guardians of the Galaxy. Nice Great. display. I should mention, next door at the former Vinylmation uh, store, they used to have a Marvel area, and that has now changed to Star Wars. Right, it's so, mostly, like, it used to be a whole Vinylmation store, and now it's it's like Star Wars and other kinds of items. Dancing Groots. I love Groot. I do love Groot. We didn't leave with one, but... But he is cute. Right. Well, perhaps we'll get one. Eventually we'll get one. But uh, no, as we were saying, you're right. That store started off as 100% Vinylmation and then it got less and less and less. And now it's half Star Wars probably and half Vinylmation, maybe even less than that. Is Vinylmation popular anymore? Like are they still, they're still making them, but I guess they just didn't need a whole store anymore for it. Right, correct. And there's Captain America. And again, you can see this is above the merchandise. So it's like, I have no idea. Like, I won't, I don't know anything about Captain America because I can't <laughs> read it. No. <laughs> so just in case we didn't make it clear, why don't you tell us exactly how to find this new store? Well, if you know where D Street is, it's right next door. It's also uh, across from Starbucks and near uh, AMC Theater, all on the west side. Right. Not far from the food truck park. That's, I don't know that everybody knows where that is, but yeah. And we just saw a Hydra shirt. How cool is that? You never see a Hydra shirt. 
I know. Now we have. Yeah. Very popular, by it, the way. It's is very it? hard just to get that picture. Everyone kept holding it and uh, picking it up to purchase one. So I had to wait my turn to uh, get that small clip. Is that true? It, that's a true story. Because, I mean, it really didn't do very well on my Instagram. People don't know on your Instagram. You don't have uh, Hydra fans. I guess that's true. So we also went to the boathouse. They asked us back for, what was it for? A tour? Was, was no, the I thought I thought we were going to see the, you know, when the captain does the, the firing of the cannon out back, which I still have not seen. <laughs> and I don't know if it's going on. And within two minutes, we're in an amphicar. Hey, we can't complain about this. This. this was awesome. Better than I ever thought it would be. How cool is this? A 1960s amphicar and splash down. Here we go. We're in the lake. Now, the these cars, there were only about 3,800 made in Germany in the 1960s. And uh, the cool thing is, I mean, there's only hundreds left now. And everybody's waving. Like I You mean, really you, feel like a somebody when you right. splash in there because it's a big deal. Everybody waves and calls out to you and... And you can see like the the guests over there to the right. That's right. And we're heading now. Uh, you'll see the Venezia water taxi, which is um, guests can purchase. I think it's seventy five dollars a person. You get strawberries and champagne for uh, I believe it's a one hour ride. And it that would be a lot of fun too. And I have a feeling we'll eventually purchase that. Oh, there's no doubt. I plan to. I'd like to do the little boat. What's the little one that the, the Lady Rose? Yes, that Lady Rose. And that Rose one sounds also awesome. right. And that one, the Lady Rose, which we'll see coming up here costs uh, the same amount per well you have two guests and it's a hundred and fifty dollars and you there it, there it is. is the steamer and i love that one i would like to do that one that would be the next one i would like to do very nice and what we're going to see now is i'm holding the camera outside the door here you know i have my arm out the door mm -hmm. just kind of cruising in the car and you can see you're very close to the water so you have a it's just a very different type of feel of any boat i've been on before i guess it's because it has wheels and it's a car also very different than uh the duck tours that they mm -hmm. have outside of boston i think you and i did it in new york city at yes. one time so uh, those are much bigger this is more of an intimate feel to it right and um i was going to say also now these these are $125 uh, for a 20-minute ride up to three guests. And I know it sounds like a lot. And, it, you know, it is a lot of money. But at the same time... Duck tours. Yay. And they, um, you know, they're very, very rare cars. They value at about $100,000 each. And uh, so it, it's something that you can't really necessarily do. I don't know about anywhere else in the world commercially, but it's, some, it's a very rare experience. I thought it was very interesting that they run on normal gas, car gasoline, and every day, early in the morning, they all drive to the Hess station and fill up together. Can you imagine being out there uh, in the early morning and seeing a whole fleet of these uh, amphicars pulling into the Hess? I'm not sure if it was every day. I think she said every few days. They oh, that, yeah, maybe, it was, maybe it was but every still, few days. But still, to be at the Hess and then see the amphicars pull up would be a very, a very interesting experience and would make for a very interesting photo. <laughs> That's true. We'll have to go and stake that out one of these <laughs> days. So, uh, and here we are. We're going to have our amphicar landing, which is quite fun. The wheels are spinning now and you go right up the ramp and now you're driving again and you mentioned earlier about feeling like a somebody but all of a sudden you're nobody that's again, right, right? <laughs> no more somebody you have to uh it's hard to get out of this car you don't want to leave i'll tell you that it's a, it's a very very nice experience but it's you know everybody's like looking at it just like we have done you know right. like we've taken photos and video and everybody just staring at you so it's kind of weird <laughs> and here we are we're we're all done we're very happy and uh you know we thought at this point we were we were done with our day but that was not the case we were asked to stay for lunch and dig a little deeper into the menu and i tell you i'm really glad we did i know and they wanted us to try some signature items uh for this meal but first we ordered a caesar salad we ordered one salad which <laughs> came out in two plates because it's usually uh, a, a big bowl of it and what a great deal only twelve dollars i was almost full at this point and you could really make three salads out of it so um, it was very good deal i think i should say almost full because this was what showed up next it is the tomahawk with a pound and a half lobster now called the long bone unbelievable one of the best cuts of uh, of steak i've ever had and the long bone is what the uh they may not call the tomahawk much longer but we'll see um but that that long bone there is where the obviously where the name comes from and this is gibson steak it's 115 dollars steak you've probably heard about it mm -hmm. and it is absolutely exquisite meat 
Um, but it's not the only hundred dollar steak on Walt Disney property, but it's probably the best that I've had. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. And I know you're not a lobster person, but the lobster was also fantastic. Well, we added the lobster because it was another $20. Like once you get the $115 steak, you might as well throw on the $20 <laughs> lobster. Is that how it goes? <laughs> well, I mean, if you have two people and you like lobster, you know, it's not that much of an upgrade price. It's really not, and especially not when your partner doesn't eat lobster, so you get the whole <laughs> pound and a half yourself. How horrible could that be? Right, I don't eat lobster, <laughs> but I do eat corn, and I could lick, lick the plate clean with this corn. It's um, roasted cut from the cob corn. I believe we talked about it last time, and it is, I would go there just for this and the new potatoes. But oh. yet to come is desserts, not one, but two desserts. And this is a double chocolate bun cake. It has blueberries, and then you have raspberry in the bottom. It has a very strong chocolate flavor. All these desserts are, are easy to share. Right, it was like very, big. very good, except it was overshadowed by what is yet to come right here. Well, that is the one. That is a dessert I'd order next time, and I will order next time. It's a whiskey caramel cornbread cake, also very large, and that portion of berries is also huge. And this is $10, so, you know, splitting it, it's $5 a person, but it is. this is an exquisite dessert with whiskey syrup, um, whipped buttermilk, mixed berries, everything. I just, I cannot wait to have that again. It really gives the Baked Alaska a run for its money. It's not as impressive as when they bring that giant brick of Baked Alaska out, but it is, as you said, exquisite, wonderful. I can't wait to try it again. The food here is, is everything that we've had has been phenomenal, except for the French fries were just so-so for me, but everything else, I, I just can't wait to go back on our own. That's right. Well, we thank the Boathouse again for having us, and, uh, as you said, we can't wait to go back. And when we went to the boathouse, we had just watched Nick Walenda walking on the Orlando Eye that day. That's right. Everything that you've seen already on our show has happened between uh, four days of media events at uh, iDrive360. Now there's Nick Walenda now stepping out on the capsule 400 feet above the ground. We were there for this uh, Guinness Book of World Record uh, record attempt. And I tell you, it was nerve wracking to watch this thing. I, you know, I didn't watch the whole time. I'd take pictures, but then I'd look away. And there was one part where people were like, oh, and I'm like, uh oh. And, but I looked and he was like standing on uh, like wires. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. I mean, like, look at the wind. You could see the wind. Actually, I have to give a. Uh, Good comment to my camera for we were very far away. You could see the wind blowing on his uh, pants there. But uh, boy, oh boy, it was uh, it was scary. Well, it, you know, I'm really wa just watching this footage now. I haven't watched our footage. And, you know, I know it seemed like in some ways it seemed very short. But at the same time, just the fact that he is out there like it was when you go up there, it is so high. It's 400 feet off the ground. Well, there is another view showing. You could see the little dot up there. That's him. And, and uh, it's moving. The right. Orlando it's Eye moving. is moving. He is, again, 400 feet off the ground. And he has to kind of, It's I guess it's wet up there and he's dodging. There's grease on it, he said. Uh, oh, boy. So it was actually, um, it made me very, very tense and very nervous while there. You get more of an appreciation for this after you've ridden. We've been on the eye about five times now. And uh, looking out, seeing how, how precarious this is, it, uh, you know... I wouldn't do it. Well, from this position, you can't see how narrow this area is. And it's it actually is pretty narrow, like maybe a little bit bigger than a balance beam or something. Uh, oh, this part, this, <laughs> this is a part where I was looking away and then... Like, can you imagine? Like, I just can't. I can't <laughs> imagine that. Well, we were very thankful that he was successful. It was a great opening. Weather worked out perfect. The day before, it was uh, pouring rain. So uh, that worked out. Then they had a special event at night. They had somebody light off the fireworks. Actually, that was one of the people, one of the uh, well, kids from uh, Make-A-Wish. Make -A -Wish. Make -A -Wish, but yes. also Billy, uh, I think his last name is Flanagan, who has played in Tarzan Rocks and you know, he was Ken, Ken from the <laughs> Ken and Barbie. He's been around Disney forever. He was the MC, and he did the uh, the Christmas tapings. He would pump up the audience. I guess he hasn't done that in a couple of years. This so. was a great fireworks display. We didn't even know they were doing this uh, when we went to this uh, party. It was wonderful. It was a nice way to set off the the uh, iDrive 360 Orlando Eye. I feel like I live there now. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> we were there yesterday. yesterday this was again. the official <laughs> public ribbon cutting with confetti and everything. So we did spend quite some time there but uh, it all this was the culma culmination culmination culmin whatever that whatever it is it is 
finally open. Uh, they had several soft opening days, but it is now open for all. Right. This was opening day yesterday. There's the crowd waiting to be the first ones in. And the very first people in are uh, are coming in right here. You might see some familiar faces walking in there. Oh, I see Banks. That's yeah, very suspicious. <laughs> How did he get there? Yeah, will you stop? He, <laughs> he was kidding. part of... We're good yeah, there he is. <laughs> but uh, but it was it was very nice. You know, they did a little something. You know, it, it's nice that the public got to see that. And uh, it's open. And it's really just a fantastic area, a good value, and so many nice restaurants and free parking. So we're going to start off with a look at Madame Tussauds. We had been in there earlier for a preview, but it was pretty much officially open at this point. This to us though is the most exciting new figure added. It's Walt Disney himself. And we did not know about him coming in until a couple days earlier when a friend of ours said, oh, and Walt's there, you know, and it's like, you know, he couldn't say anything publicly about it. And uh, to me, this was like very exciting to be able to. Come yeah, we and ran see ahead how. to see Walt. Actually, that's why there's nobody there because uh, as soon as we found out he was there, he was going to be there. We kind of zipped on in to see Walt, and it was uh, it was very exciting to see him. I mean, what a great. What a perfect resemblance. Right. Not that I've met him personally, but I mean, of course, all the pictures and everything you see, I think it's uh, it's stunning. And like he, his rings, he has his wedding ring on and there's also an Irish ring on. Um, no smoke tree ranch tie. I figured that uh, they would have that, but uh, I guess... Maybe he, uh, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. In this, when this picture was taken, he wouldn't have been wearing such a thing. And if you if you look around, all I see, the only Mickey I see is this, you know, this the cup. Yes, and uh, everything else is is sort of alluded to, like Mary Poppins. You know, it's not the movie Mary Poppins; it's a book Mary Poppins, and they have a, a bookshelf of books that are very. Well, this alludes to the studio, but clearly, it's not the Walt Disney Studio. There's no roller coaster there, and the castle is a composite of all the castle. So perhaps it's a rights issue. I mean, most people wouldn't even notice. And there is like you—you you think all this animated drawing are Mickey's if you aren't paying attention. Oh, I never. But none thought of it that. is Mickey. Right. And, and while the books, it's just sort of interesting how some of the books are, well, many of the books have to do with movies that eventually were made. There's one that became That Darn Cat and, and such. So I just thought it was very interesting to kind of look at what books they chose for that. Right. Again, I just can't get over what a great likeness of Walt Disney that you have here. It was great to get pictures taken with him. And the thing about Madame Tussauds, which I love, is you can touch the figures. You can put your arm around them. Uh, you touch can, a mustache. Well, you we, touch you, a teeth. You, you, <laughs> no, we did because not we Walt's. See. I touched oh, somebody else's. Oh, tooth. we did. Oh, okay, we didn't touch Walt's. But anyway, you can. You have to have some respect for. Uh, oh, we used to stop. But you know, his hair felt kind of like hairspray. That's right. Oh, there's Steve Jobs and. Uh, Another great he he I don't think he was there for the preview. He was. Oh, he was. There I did. Mm -hmm. Okay, I wasn't. I did not go to the preview. In all honesty, so uh, Denise was there for that one. There were about. We're not going to show like a ton of Madame Tussauds. There was about six or seven new figures since I had been. We actually saw a very good preview. There is uh, Jimmy Fallon. And right. That, is, he that is was new. new. I will link to a full twenty-five minute video showing every single figure in great detail that we shot on this uh, this on first this day. day. So uh, with, thing, with no people in there, so that was nice. But you, I mean, you really have to see it for yourself because you can, you know, meet the characters and, um, you know, have your photos taken with the characters. And there's like, uh, what's the word for it? Like stuff that you can play with, you know, props. like hair. There's props, all yes. kinds of props. I mean, uh, we have so many pictures Blue of us. hair. We went in one time and we just uh, decided we were just going to take pictures for us and have fun. And we, we for Elvis, I dressed up. I put the Elvis wig on. We had guitars. You can touch and use all of these things. It's not one of the boring wax museums like Stars Hall of Fame back in the old days. I never found that boring. Well, compared to this, though, that you would just look at right. things. You can touch them and really be part of You the, can sit uh, with Audrey. Hepburn. Right, and, absolutely. And this is new. Um, Jennifer Lawrence as Katniss. That mm -hmm. was a new figure. Plus Shrek and Fiona also. So maybe there's like a dozen figures that are new, but most of them were here. But it's really fun to kind of see. Uh, you know, what's come in. And we were told there is plenty more to come, too. They will always be changing them out. Sometimes some of these figures will go on tour to other places. They'll bring new ones in. So, uh, you know, there's always will be a reason to go back. And Tom Hanks is now in the gift shop. That's when, right. When I came here the first time, Tom Hanks was elsewhere. Like, they've kind of, they didn't have a gift shop yet. So maybe he was there, but I don't, 
I didn't know it was a gift shop. So while we look at this view from the very top of the Orlando Eye. This is this is what Nick Walendo would have seen. <laughs> like, yeah, we, oh. He was walking right there. It was believe me, it's it's kind of high. And he was like bending down to look at people like I can't I just can't. <laughs> like it was great in the capsule, but to, I wouldn't even want to open the door. But we will have full segments on this, the Orlando Eye itself, with highlights of the ride next week. We're also going to look at the Sea Life Aquarium. We went back and we really enjoyed that more than we ever thought we would. The, we saw a octopus and a, and a sea turtle, so many cool things. We just want to make sure that we don't rush through everything and we don't make the show too long. So next week we're going to have full coverage of everything else. And I'm looking forward to that. Plus Splitsville. We're going to talk about Splitsville. That's right. Uh, thanks to PixieVacations.com. Uh, we really appreciate the um, the prizes that they've been giving. But also, just check them out for the best deals at Walt Disney World. Also, Maple Leaf Tickets, our official ticket agency. We appreciate them. And Theme Park Connection, our original sponsor. We're going to go there this week. Of course, we appreciate them very, very much. And we'll see all of you next week. Have a great week. Have a great week.